Hello everybody and welcome. In today's video I want to talk to you guys about some mistakes that I see a lot of people making when they're out there shooting Milky Way photos. I don't want you guys to make those mistakes because they're going to make your photos not look exactly like what you want. It's going to be really obvious that you're new to shooting the Milky Way and while that's totally okay I do want to help you guys avoid these basic beginner mistakes that I made for years when I was first learning night photography. A lot of these mistakes have really easy fixes that will take you a matter of a second or two, and so they're super easy to fix and avoid in general. I'm going to talk to you guys about all seven of those mistakes here. I'm going to be showing you guys some images on the screen as well. All right, guys, let's go ahead and look at the first mistake here. A mistake number one is that your exposure isn't correct, and really this mistake goes for just your settings in general aren't correct. Uh, but more often than not, I see photographers who don't quite have the correct exposure dialed in. Now I talk about this in a few of my other videos, but essentially you want to make sure that your exposure is as long as it possibly can be without having trailing stars. And you want it to be as long as possible because you can collect the most amount of light, therefore making your image as bright as possible because at night we're obviously struggling to get enough light to keep our image uh, properly exposed. Now we use something called the rule of 500, which is where you'd go 500 divided by your focal length and that gives you your shutter speed. So using this formula you can do the math yourself and see that with something like a 16 millimeter lens, a really common wide angle lens, you're able to get the exposure to about 30 seconds long before you'll start seeing those stars streaking pretty badly. Now if you're using something like a 50 millimeter lens, you're only going to be able to get a 10 second exposure, which is why wide angle lenses are generally more sought after for night photography, especially ones where the aperture opens up quite a bit, because you also want to open up that aperture to f2.8, f1.8, 1.4, however open your lens can get. Now with exposures that are too long, you're going to start to see these trailing stars. And of course, the longer the exposure, the more pronounced that effect is going to be. But you don't really want those stars at all. Unless you're going for a star trail image like this one, it can look really cool. But that's about three hours worth of exposure. That's a song for another time. So keep those exposures short. Avoid having trailing stars. Uh, but keep the exposure as long as you possibly can without having these stars. Use the rule of 500s when you're in the field. What I always like to do is figure out my, my shutter speed beforehand before I go out so I know that I have an 18 millimeter lens, I can shoot a 25 second long exposure or whatever it may be. So tip number two is something that a lot of camera lenses have on them that I want you to avoid. Now, especially on some of the nicer lenses, they have something called uh, lens stabilization. And essentially what this lens stabilization does is it's an in-lens stabilizing unit that uh, helps you stabilize your photos and keep your photos looking really sharp. This is a really awesome feature and something in nicer lenses that's awesome to have when you are out run and gun, you're shooting, you're holding your camera. But for night photos, you're going to be using a tripod. You pretty much have to be using a tripod and you don't want this on because your camera is not going to be moving. Now this in lens stabilization inside the lens is always slightly moving ever so slightly. So this is not a problem when you're out shooting uh, handheld because you're also going to be slightly moving. When you're on a tripod though, you want to turn this off because it can introduce a little bit of blur and a little bit of shake to the lens because when this is on it's essentially always moving and so it's always expecting the camera lens to be moving. Simply just flip this off. It's really easy to just flip the switch off. If your lens doesn't have this switch, your lens doesn't have in lens stabilization and don't worry about this tip. Now tip number three is going to be to reduce the brightness of your LCD screen on the back of your camera. Um, I don't know about you guys, but me personally, I like having it at maximum brightness when I'm out shooting during the day because it helps me to see the screen when there's maybe some bright light outside and I otherwise couldn't see it. However, at night, you want to turn that LCD screen all the way down. The reason is because uh, if you've ever like looked at your phone at nighttime and maybe let's say you're out shooting night photos, you look at your phone for a couple minutes while your photos are taking and then you look back outside and you cannot see anything. Uh, having a bright light, such as your camera screen or your phone, on uh, really makes it hard to see things outside. Not only that, but when your LCD screen is on, uh, your image is going to look a lot brighter than it actually is. When you get home on the computer, you're going to notice it's not quite as bright as it is in person. So for that reason, I always like to turn my LCD screen down. I dim it as much as I possibly can, and that way it gives me a little more accurate look at exactly what my photos are going to look like, so I'm not looking at them with like an artificial bright. Brightness. 
All right, guys, mistake number four is that you aren't stacking your photos and or you aren't taking dark frames. So if you do stack your photos, keep listening because you may not be taking dark frames. Essentially, uh, let's start with the first part of this. Stacking your photos means taking multiple exposures of the same shot and then combining them in a third-party software. The common one for Macs is called Starry Landscape Stacker, and for PC, it's called Sequator. The reason why you want to stack these images is because it's going to put those images on top of each each other and it's going to reduce the noise using some pretty cool technology that I'm not going to explain. But it's very easy to do. So you should be stacking your photos to help reduce the noise because if you're taking night photos, they're going to be noisy. You're going to be shooting at probably ISO 3200, 6400, 10,000, whatever it is, they're going to be noisy. You need to be taking them. Now, if you already are stacking your photos, but you don't know what a dark frame is, I want you guys to start taking dark frames. What a dark frame is, is a exposure taken at the exact same time or around the same time as your regular shots uh, with the lens cap on. The idea of this is that you're taking a photo with a lens cap on and then you'll be able to put that, that dark frame in with the light frames, which are the regular exposures, and the software will be able to compare that dark frame to the light frames and reduce even more noise. Essentially, when the software looks at that dark frame, it knows that any noise that's present is because of the camera sensor and not because of what's going on in your image. Uh, and that is because you have a lens cap on when you're taking your dark frame. So what I'm doing at the end of a shoot is just putting my lens cap on, I'm putting my camera back in my bag, and I might just click a couple photos right after. Now these need to be at the exact same settings, same shutter speed, ISO aperture, everything as when you are in the field. You also want to take it when you're out in the field rather than at home because temperature of your sensor can affect the noise pattern as well. So do take these when you're out in the field. Maybe just right when you're putting your camera away, take a few. Now you can import multiple dark frames. I usually take between two and four just depending on how much time I have. If I'm just standing there, I'll take more and that will help reduce the noise even more. So take those dark frames. Mistake number five is that your photos are too complex. I see this a lot with night photography. It's really nice to keep your night photos simple. The composition is very simple and not have a lot of extra elements going on in the foreground because things are going to be dark if it's a night photo. Having too much going on is distracting and it's really hard to bring back all those details. For that reason, I like images like this one. You can see here we've got this beautiful arch right here. It's really simple. It's almost silhouetted and it works really well. Now this doesn't mean that every single night photo you take needs to have just a stupid easy foreground. You can definitely have cool things things going on. This is another photo I took at Mount Rainier. I like this one because there's flowers. But what makes this one work is that the flowers aren't too overly detailed. It's not taking away from anything in the scene. Now if I had a bunch of sticks and weeds and ferns and grass and stuff like that, it's going to become a little distracting and hard to bring back those details. So stay away from things like that and try and keep your foregrounds a little more simplistic. Keep the focus on the Milky Way and really help your viewers see that this is a night photo and make it so that that is the main importance of your image. Now mistake number six, and this is something I see all the time, not just on night photography, but in all kinds of photography, is the white balance is incorrect. This one drives me nuts, guys. I want to help you guys to avoid a poor white balance on your image. The way that you do that essentially is just keep adjusting your white balance until you feel like you're not looking at your image through like a colored piece of glass, for example. So a lot of times when you look at an image, everything is blue tinted, every single thing in the image, or everything is yellow tinted, or everything is magenta tinted, or green tinted, whatever it is. Don't have a photo like this. Uh, what I always recommend to people, and a lot of times, especially if you're a newer photographer, it's really hard to balance the whites, and I totally understand that. But the best way to go after it is to keep adjusting the temperature and the tint in your image, adjust it back and forth, left and right, and just keep toggling before and after. And if you adjust the bar one way, toggle before and after. If you like the effect better than you did before, then keep it. Keep adjusting it and play with it. A lot of photographers look over the white balance. They don't really balance it because they use auto white balance in the field. I totally understand. I do too. But a lot of times the camera doesn't do a good job in the field, especially if you have a lower end camera. So balance those whites. Really try and make things look neutral. Um, one of the key ways is to pay attention. Make sure your stars look white and they're not tinted a certain color. Your Milky Way should look orangish or reddish. And of course you can tint things towards blue uh, because it is a night photo and you would expect things to be a little more blue, but you don't want your whole image to be just flooded with blue. So like I said, I know this is really hard to kind of explain 
explain to you how to do it, but it's just one of those things where you need to try it, toggle before and after, and keep trying different combinations until you find the perfect white balance on your night photos. Now mistake number seven might be obvious, and that is that you don't want blurry photos, duh. But night photos, of course, are a lot harder to make clear rather than daytime photos. The reason that night photos are so challenging is that we, generally speaking, can't use autofocus. We're going to have to manual focus ourselves. There's a few different ways to focus in the field, but one of my favorites is either the guess and check method, which is where you dial your focus all the way out to infinity, and then you slowly keep dialing it back until your photos are in focus. Um, but if you want a way that works a little bit faster and a little bit better, the way to do it is to change your camera to manual focus, and when you start zooming in, your camera uh, LCD screen should show you the image zoomed in to like times 10. Now if you click like the center button or OK or whatever it is on your lens, it should magnify it one more time. And then you can scroll around the image while you're turning your focus ring and this will allow you to find a star. Find the brightest star in the sky and what you're going to do is keep dialing the focus ring uh, while you're looking at that brightest star zoomed in as far as you can and you will continue to dial it until that star is at its absolute smallest. When the star is the smallest, it's in the most focus. If it's blurry, it's gonna be a lot larger because it's gonna be a little bit hazy around the edge and it's gonna be a little soft. So dial it in until your star is in sharp focus. Now, if that doesn't work for you, if that's too complicated, like I said, use the first method, guess and check. Uh, set your lens to infinity on the focus, take a photo, then uh, look at how sharp it is, dial it back a little bit, see if it's sharper. If it's not sharper, go back the other way. Uh, if it starts to get sharper but it still isn't totally sharp, then keep going. Keep dialing your lens in because true infinity on a lens, generally speaking, is never the actual infinity. Usually you have to dial it ever so slightly back. But once you find the spot on your lens where it is in focus, you can look at it and this will be the spot every single time that you're going to set the focus to. So a lot of photographers will use maybe a pen or a small piece of tape to mark that true infinity on their lens for night photography. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully this helps you guys. I know right now is a great time to shoot night photos in the Northern Hemisphere. I've been out myself really enjoying it. So hopefully these tips helped you guys uh, to avoid these common mistakes that I see all the time and help you guys create better photos. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And as always, really appreciate your comments, subscribes, and your likes so I can continue to make these videos for you guys. Uh, and lastly, but not least, I want to let you guys know if you do want some more hands-on help with your Milky Way photography, I lead a variety of workshops every single year, especially in the summers in the United States where I help you guys take night photos. I would love to have you guys out. I'd love to teach you guys in person how to shoot these night photos, and I'll also teach you how to edit them as well, which is a huge aspect of night photography. If you guys are interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link down below where you can register for a workshop in the upcoming year, and I really look forward to seeing you guys out there. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.